Hi, I'm Chris Frame and welcome back to my channel. With the COVID-19 pandemic causing travel disruptions around the world, the global fleet of cruise ships have been laid up for several months now. Throughout June, cruise lines around the world, particularly those undertaking ocean cruising, have further pushed out the resumption of their cruise voyages. This includes Carnival Cruise Lines, with travel now paused until the end of September, Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Azamara, Silver Sea, MSC and p and Australia all halting voyages until mid-September. Norwegian Cruise Line postponing US voyages until mid-September. p and UK extending its port and operations until October 2020. Cunard pushing out its resumption of cruising operations until November 2020. And Holland America cancelling all voyages out of Vancouver until 2021. Around the world, the fleet of cruise ships are largely in a state of warm or hot layup. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, you can check out the video that I did in the info card or in the description below. In essence, this means a ship remains active and running on their own power and still require personnel aboard to run the ship. During the early stages of the cruise pause, the majority of cruise ships were docked or anchored relatively close to their base of operations. This made sense because in March and April, cruise lines weren't sure when the cruise pause would end, so they wanted to have their ships nearby their current itineraries so they could resume cruising relatively quickly. However, as the pause in operations has been repeatedly extended, many cruise ships have been moved further from their home ports, while others are being used to repatriate crew to their home countries. Now, in mid-2020, a number of locations around the world are playing host to large clusters of cruise ships in warm layup. In the United Kingdom, the ships of the P&O and Cunard fleets largely returned to Southampton, their base of operations, at the beginning of the cruise pause. However, they have since left Southampton and have spent a lot of time at anchor off the coast of Weymouth on the south coast of England. In fact, for a few weeks in June, the entire P&O UK fleet, as well as Queen Mary II and Queen Victoria, were at anchor within eyeshot of each other. While in recent days, several P&O ships have made the short journey to Bournemouth. Carnival Cruise Lines has had an unusual presence in the UK, with ships based in UK ports in recent months due to repatriation voyages. This has seen Carnival Breeze berthed near Portland, while Carnival Magic and Carnival Valor are both anchored off Torquay. Moving east, the Morella fleet has largely been anchored off the Isle of Wight. CMV's fleet is largely based at Tilbury near London, while the ships of Fred Olsen Cruises are now docked in Rosyth near Edinburgh in Scotland. Most of Costa Cruise Line's large fleet of cruise ships are based in Italian ports, with clusters at Civitavecchia, Genova and La Spezia. Several other Costa ships are anchored far from home in a huge cluster of ships near Manila in the Philippines, which I will touch on later. While the 1996-built Costa Victoria has recently been sold to become an accommodation ship at a shipyard, the MSC fleet is perhaps even more spread out than Costa's with ships as far afield as MSC Orchestra, which is anchored off Durban in South Africa, while the European-based ships are anchored or docked in ports across both Italy and France. In fact, the port of Marseille in France is home to another large cluster of ships, with Aida Sol, Silver Shadow, Norwegian Getaway, Norwegian Breakaway, and MSC Magnifica all berthed at the port. Across the Atlantic and in the waters off the Bahamas, you'll find a large cluster of Carnival Cruise Line ships, which are in company with ships from RCI and also Celebrity Cruises. There are too many to list all of them here, but notable mentions include the Oasis of the Seas, one of the largest cruise ships in the world, as well as a 1996-built Carnival Sunshine, which when it entered service was named Carnival Destiny and was the first cruise ship to exceed 100,000 tonnes. Newcomer Virgin Voyages has had a traumatic start to their cruising career, as their launch coincided with the pandemic worsening around the world. Their first ship, Scarlet Lady, has been based off the coast of the US. However, she has since departed Miami and is now bound for Italy for longer term storage. Her sister ship, Valiant Lady, was recently floated out at Fincantieri, where she is being built. California is also housing numerous laid up cruise ships, with a large cluster off the coast of Long Beach in company with numerous tankers, while Celebrity Eclipse and Celebrity Millennium are at anchor off San Diego. Across the Pacific and the Philippines is home to one of the largest clusters of cruise ships ever seen. In fact, at the time of recording, there were 28 cruise ships anchored off the coast of Manila, including Cunard's Queen Elizabeth, as well as ships from Costa, Princess, Silver Sea, NCL, Holland America and Carnival. 
The Philippines is also the temporary home of the entire Piando Australia fleet, which has been based there since the Australian cruise ban was implemented in April. This means that while many ports around the world are hosting laid up cruise ships, the ports of Australia, as well as those in New Zealand, are unusually empty of all cruising tonnage, with cruise ships not expected to be allowed back into local ports for many months yet. While this overview is not an exhaustive list of where all of the world's 300 cruise ships are based, I hope it gives you some idea as to the scale of the shutdown and how the ports across the world are assisting cruise ships during this unprecedented time. If you know of another cluster of cruise ships that you think I should have mentioned, please let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. If you're interested in maritime history, check out my recent video about the building of the RMS Queen Mary. Or if like me, you're longing for the cruise holiday to return, check out my cruise ship review playlist to help tide you over until cruising resumes. Thanks so much for watching and until we are able to sail again, I hope to see you on board.